Let's start by looking at the short run. Remember in the short run, a firm can change the amount of labor it's using, but not the amount of capital. So what happens in the short run if this firm has the same number of machines and equipment, but varies the number of workers? Remember the table we saw last time, showing the number of golden snitches that could be produced given a certain number of workers and machines. Suppose there's a last minute Quidditch tournament and we need more snitches. We only have one machine and there's no time to buy another one. But we can hire more workers to help run this one machine we have. With one worker and one machine, we can produce two snitches. Add a second worker and we can now produce five snitches. Add a third worker and now we produce six. We can now define the marginal product of labor, the change in total output resulting from using one extra worker holding other inputs constant. With one worker and one machine, the marginal product of the next worker is three. That is, adding a second worker changes the number of snitches that can be produced from two to five, an increase of three. But when we have two workers and one machine, the marginal product of the next worker drops to one. That is, adding a third worker increases the snitch production by only one unit from five to six. This is an example of a key assumption we typically make for short run production. There is a diminishing marginal product of labor. The next worker increases production less than the previous worker did. This is similar to the concept of diminishing margin utility that we talked about in consumer theory. The fifth worker doesn't add as much to the firm's productivity as the first worker. Just the fifth pizza slice doesn't contribute as much to your happiness as the first slice. Note that additional workers will almost always increase total production. As with consumption, we generally assume that more is better and more workers will be able to produce more product. That is to say that the marginal product of each additional worker is positive. But this marginal product tends to get smaller and smaller as we add more workers. This isn't always the case. In some cases, a second worker may have a higher marginal product than the first, since these workers can work together to help each other be more productive. But eventually, each worker will add less and less to the overall productivity. Remember that in describing diminishing marginal product of labor, we're holding other inputs constant. Each additional worker simply means more workers trying to use the same set of machines and tools. Think about an example of digging a hole with one shovel and one wheelbarrow. Going from one worker to two workers probably increases the marginal product, since the pair can work more efficiently with one guy digging and one guy carting away the dirt. But as we add a third, fourth, and fifth worker, there's nothing for them to do but sit around and watch the first two use the one shovel and the one wheelbarrow. In the long run, you could always add more shovels and wheelbarrows. But in the short run, these capital inputs are fixed. If you keep adding more workers, eventually they'll run out of things to do. This seemingly simple concept of diminishing marginal product has some big implications. In fact, the concept was once used to predict that humans would soon die off from mass starvation. Check out the application video to learn more.